guest hostess this week is Joan Rivers. This is Doc Severson along with Tommy Newsom and the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Joan and her guest, Charles Nelson Riley, The Weather Girls, Catherine Oxenberg, and Wrestling Hulk Hogan. And now, here's Joan show, but we were talking about whether or not Madonna's in Playboy, we was, we was, and we saw the pictures. Madonna is in Playboy, and I'm not surprised, because I understand she does everything like a bunny, so it should not be. But enough about Madonna. Let's discuss other beautiful women. So how am I today? Oh. <laughs> Tell me the truth, because this morning my tidy balls, but this morning my tidy bowl man saw me and said, "You look flushed." And I got me, you know why? Because it's California, and the weather here is the worst it's been in ten years. Uh, how many of you are out of towners? It is not this hot in June or July usually. I mean, it's crazy. Don't you think it's where are you from? New Jersey. God bless New Jersey. I mean, I guess normal weather, you know what I mean? There are other problems there, like, uh, uh, here's Jimmy Hopper in my front lawn. But, uh, but, you know, I mean, here you sweat all day, and then at night it turns cold. I woke up this morning covered in rust. And, uh, and, actually, though, I'm from Beverly Hills, so I was covered in gold plate. Uh, oh, is this a rich community, Beverly Hills? That my slumlord is Kenny Rogers. I, uh, the, you know, J.C. Penney's is called J.C. Dollar. I mean, the, the people, there is so much money here. The soup kitchen has a maitre d'. Uh, that bumper cars have valet parking. It is the richest community in the world. The big movie out this week is Creature from the Black Jacuzzi. Uh, yes! And, a, and my neighbor, Desiree Nussbaum, who is really, oh, big bucks there. Picasso painted her house, which I think I once mentioned. She has a lifeguard in her bathroom, and the women, she, she has Dudley Moore for a paperweight, do you understand? <laughs> Nobody is happy just being rich. Everybody wants to be in show business. Like, isn't it true? Think about it seriously. Everybody says, well, if I really had my brothers, because I, all my life I wanted to be in show business, and I started out really an awful, terrible club. I was working state fairs for a while. <gasps> the first job I ever did, I swear to you, I followed a dancing pig. They thought it was an encore. It was just a... <laughs> Joker. <laughs> the whole audience looks like 5,000 horsey Victor dogs. <laughs> but, but everybody in Beverly Hills, as I said, they're rich, they all want to be in show business, and they all have crazy religions. What religion are you? Jewish. Jewish. So, oh, so you mad? Oh, okay, that's, that's simple, right? Yeah. Now, it's nice to know what religion you are, and they answer. Out here, nobody says Jewish, Episcopalian, Methodist. But my, my gardener is a Nazi Quaker. Do you understand what I'm telling you? <laughs> Every Friday night, he declares war, then he refuses to go. I mean, just, that's... <laughs> is a Beverly Hills Muslim. At sundown, she faces east and prays toward Neiman Marcus. <laughs> that, I mean, they're all the crazy. That, and across the street from me, I have a brand new religious cult that is just beginning. People that worship food. They're called Friends of Orson. And, 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 oh, <laughs> did you read the Enquirer where they found a family of 12 living in Orson Wells? Oh, oh yes! <laughs> I ate the world, I ate the children. <laughs> Anyhow, we have a great show for you tonight. My guests are going to be Charles Nelson Riley, who I love. Yes. The Weather Girls, Dynasty's Catherine Oxenberg, and Hulk Hogan.
I see you. <laughs> here, here we are after our crazy night last night. Yes, drive, flying back and forth to Las yeah. Vegas, and we do it again tonight. And two great shows. Yeah, oh, great shows. Fantastic. Great. Fantastic. Uh, and Gary Shanley now, who was married, is getting an omen. That's over fast. Yeah. I guess I understand he couldn't perform, huh? On his honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way it goes. Well, it's a sad story, but true. <laughs> You seem to have I, a sad I, story. What, I, what's the matter? You're kind of punching around in a chair there. NBC redid the dressing rooms and spent a lot of money. Very nicely, too. Yeah, except when they got to the bathrooms, the toilets, somebody went for cheap and they have no lid on the toilet. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so you have to keep all your underwear on the sink. And I went like this six minutes before showtime, and all my underwear went into the toilet. And I am sitting here feeling like a six month old baby that wants its mother desperately. I, it's just, I hate toilets, anyhow. That when, you, when my husband Edgar, when he leaves the seat up and you, the lid up, and you don't notice, and you go and you sit down, and you go, wait a second, I'm very low. <laughs> so I'm very damp now. Well, n uh, never mind that. How about the shirt? I the mean, shirt this, is dry. This is another thing, but yes. that is a beautiful thing. Thank you, thing. thank you. Well, I mean, that didn't really. fall in. Thank you. But it's... You know, that looks like a stop sign on Fire Island, I think. <laughs> <laughs> a stop sign on Fire Island? Yes. <laughs> thank you. But like, I like when we match, which is nice. Do, do our plugs. Blues, while yes. Uh, after Joan is through in uh, Las Vegas, uh, two weeks at Las Vegas there at the uh, beautiful Caesars Palace, with Gary Shanling and uh, Doc Severinsen. August 17th at the Circle Star Theater in San Carlos, California. Then August the 20th in Detroit, Michigan at the beautiful Pine Knob Theater. And then August 22nd and 23rd at Oakdale Music Theater in Oakdale, Connecticut. Yeah. That's a good beautiful summer. Friends. A good summer. Absolutely. Yeah, should we do a commercial and we can bring out our first guests? I can't wait to hear them sing. Good. And we can let your underwear dry out a little more, yes, too. Yes, we can let my underwear dry out. <laughs> now, pronounce it correctly with me. Reuniti. That's right. I want to make sure, because you speak better than I do when it comes to Italian. It is now Reuniti. Reuniti. Oh, I've got Reuniti. Ice of time. Reuniti on ice. So nice. We. Oui. tonight I had the pleasure of working with them at a benefit in New York City for AIDS. They're going to be appearing with me at Atlantic, C uh, Atlantic City at Caesars July 30th to August 1st, and then at the Melody Tent in Hyannis Port on August 8th. They had a huge record out a year ago called It's Raining Men. They have a new record out called Big Girls Don't Cry. Will you please <laughs> welcome the Weather Girls? Let myself get absolutely 
Two of you, and you, ever since you stopped the show, they did a gospel number at the end of that show in New York. Yeah. Yeah. You just brought that house down. We it was that. wonderful. Well, a little shaking from us, you know. A little shaking from all of us were out there. <laughs> now, are you two related? No, no. way. No. <laughs> no. So, how'd you get together? First of all, names, which is which? I'm Martha Wash. I'm Isora Armstead. Okay, so how'd you get together? A young man out there put us together, which is now one of our managers named Douglas Kibble. And we, what were you we doing before? We started singing gospel right. with him. Well, we started singing gospel in the church, but uh, we formed a gospel group some years back. And Don't it was called News of the World, yes. Okay. And we've been singing together for years and years and years and years off and on. What do you call years? Because you both look young. What do you call <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Many well, moons, many moons, many moons. <laughs> what would you, now, so the first hit was Weather Girls. Well, the first, but you were before Weather Girls. You were another, before you we got your hand. Right. Two tons of fun. Two tons of fun. Yeah. Did you get a lot of teasy? Why? Well, I was kind of on the pleasantly large, humongous side. <laughs> Do you get teasing because you're chubby? Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. But it's part of... Yeah. But it's a positive teasing. I mean, uh, the negative teasing goes out once they hear us sing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Were you always chubby as a child? Believe it or not, no. So what happened? <laughs> If you're a thin kid, why not, you know? Oh, uh, well, I have babies and good cooking. Oh. <laughs> and what about you? I'm very much single. 
No, I mean, were you chubby as a child? Oh, I thought you were talking about marriage. Oh, let's, let's find out about being single. Oh, you so see, you're single, oh, never married? No, no. So, and you're married, so why don't you fix her up? I've been she's trying. Don't she's worry, trying. I've been, I'm tired of her. <laughs> she's trying. What are you looking for? I'm not looking. Money. Yeah. She wants money. <laughs> they have to bring her endowment funds and old age pension and insurance to me. <laughs> Hey, you, do you find it hard now that you, you've become so successful to keep the family and, and the marriage together? How many kids do you have? <clears throat> Only 11. <laughs> You're making a joke. No. You have 11 children? Six boys, five girls, four <gasps> grandchildren. Thank you. Did you have them one by one or a litter? I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> like it, but one by one, um, mine, yeah. Eleven years you didn't see your toes. Have you ever thought about that? You're right. You're right. You're right. That's great. That's just great. Well, uh, what a, I can't wait till we work together. <laughs> Isn't so many, I know you have to leave the saying They have to go, they have to go, they have to go. Thank will you come you. back again here, we and we'll see you guys sure. together in Atlantic City? Yes. It's going to be yes. Yes. Yeah, we'll get you fixed up, don't okay. you? No. Okay. And you, you don't get fixed up. All right. commercial message of English, so stay tuned. What nice ladies they were. They're yeah. very talented. Very Beautiful talented. Performers. Yeah, and boy, 11 kids. I wish I had had more than one, I'll tell you that. Maybe not 11, but more than one. My next guest has a video cassette, two TV shows that will be airing in the fall. He is, I think, the primary cause now for suddenly all this Hulkamania that is all over the country now, which you can see in this clip coming right up here. so funny. I'm sitting here with a number one musician in all the world, Mr. Doc Severinsen, and the most beautiful woman in the whole world right here, Mrs. Joan Rivers. And I gotta tell you something. The way I'm dressed right now, you know, I've been traveling all around the country, but whenever I come to Los Angeles, California, I got this big problem, you know. Whether it's wrestling, making personal appearances, everybody knows I'm the heavyweight champion in the world. But right here at NBC, there's a real heavy-duty dude, a man named Brandon Tartikoff, you know. And every time I come here, Doc, the guy runs around with these multi-million dollar contracts for records, for movies, for television appearances, and I really appreciate it because he's one of my best friends. But I gotta tell you, Brandon, back off just a little bit because I got something on my mind. I got two or three more people in Madison Square Garden I gotta bust up. Now that that's out of the way, I wanna say one thing while I'm here. <laughs> one thing. Nobody's you know, gonna stop you, but... You know, you know, you know, this is my Hulk Hogan Hollywood camouflage right here so I can sneak by Brandon Tartikoff. But the real reason I'm here is to tell all those Hulkamaniacs out there at 11.30, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning to train, say your prayers and eat your vitamins. But the real, real reason I'm here is I got something for this lady right here. What you got, Hulk? I got the Joneses for you, baby. <laughs> I got the Joneses for you. And right now on Nationwide TV, I want to tell Joan Rivers I've had a secret heartache, a secret love affair for you for a long time. Oh. Get in line. <laughs> Let me tell you, 
Next to you, they should have called the movie Rambo First Wimp. I've never seen I mean, you look great. Well, you know, part of this disguise, part of the Hollywood camouflage, you know, from the waist down here, this was from Mr. T. He taught me how to dress from the waist down. He's my main man. But, you know, that Sylvester Stallone, that Rambo dude, he's the one that talked me into the camouflage so I could hide out because, you know, he's pretty popular, too. Almost as popular as a hulkster, Doc. And he has to hide out once in a while, too, you know? But how do you keep yourself in shape, Hulk? Well, the thing is, you know, when you're a champion, you know, you dedicate yourself to something. Just like this is your job, you know, you live the same day and night. And uh, <laughs> as far as professional wrestling goes, you know, I don't punch no time clock. The only thing I have to do is answer to myself. And I live the same day and night. Blood, sweat, and tears is the way I live this thing. And the people get off on that. They believe in it. That's why the Hulkster is the number one at what he does, pinning people right in the center of the ring. Now, but do you work out? Do you get up in the morning, like, lift your wife a couple of times? Yeah, I, you know. Well, you know, what I don't, do you do? I'll work out at different times. Sometimes at midnight when I leave here, I'm going to train because I took valuable time out. I should be hanging and banging with the 24-inch pythons working out. But I came down here for a couple reasons, and the main reason was you. But I do work out day and night. It's my job. Yeah, but so what do you eat? Like, give us, give us a typical Happy Hulk day. <laughs> You get up in the morning, you have a bowl of iron. Then what do you, I mean, you know, what do you do? You wake up in the morning, what time? Well, you know, the thing is, my schedule's so crazy, I sleep whenever I can. I'm not out on, an, on an airplane. I was just sleeping in the green room back there until I heard that you came out here. Yeah. And I had to watch the TV. But the thing is, you know, I eat anything I can get my hands on because I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not uh, in the competition. I want to be big, rough, and tough. I want to be the biggest. I want to be so big that my peers, you know, even the other wrestlers are afraid of me. I want to be so big, man, that they have to stick me in a steel cage. And I might just even scare the wrestler off, and then I get my hand raised without doing nothing. When, when, did, <laughs> when did you get this dream? <laughs> when did you want, like, this, this American dream that you want to be the biggest? Did you always want to be a wrestler when the time you were a kid? Well, the thing, ever since I was a little teeny hulkster, you know, my daddy used to take me to the wrestling <laughs> matches, man. He used to take me there, and I'd watch these guys. One-on-one -on -one confrontation. The ultimate physical confrontation. No helmets, no shoulder pads, no croquet, no tennis rackets, none of that gaga, man. They were button heads locking up on the big guns. And when I saw that, I was turned on, you know. And I dedicated my life to training. And one day I said I was going to be the world wrestler. Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, and that's exactly what happened. You know, if you want to be somebody like my main man, Mr. T says, you can do it if you want it that bad, but you got to put your blood, sweat, and tears into it and believe in it. Yeah, yeah, I, but you know, you could be a champion too. Sure. You know. You know, you know, what's so funny about this whole situation is some of you people think I'm crazy out here talking about being in love with Joan Rivers, never met her before, <laughs> but it's a fantasy, you know? And sometimes if you fantasize long enough, whether she's got her husband named Edgar or whatever, you know, you fantasize someday she might fall in love with a hookster. But the thing is, <laughs> she could be a champion, too, because you wouldn't believe what it's like. I she's got a beautiful face, a beautiful mind, and you know something? That body of hers, man, <laughs> that's right on. And if you can feel the body heat, I'd like to slip a little bit closer to you. Sorry, Doc. But if you can feel the body heat, if you could feel the body language coming from this lady here, you'd be getting off on it too. Let me ask you, is, is there a Mrs. Hulk? A Mrs. Hulk? Yeah, there's a Mrs. Hogan. That's my mother. What do you think? Where do you think I came from? <laughs> Man, you know, people ask me that. I don't have time to date people, girlfriends. I train, say my prayers, eat my vitamins, and I even take time out here to come to the Tonight Show. Yeah, but look, have you ever hurt anybody? I mean, you've got a lot of power there, you know what I'm saying. Have, have you... <laughs> well, well, you know, well, you know, the thing is, I'm the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, and I go out there to win matches, you know. I'm not going out there to break bones or scar faces or anything like that, but I take people right out in the middle of the ring, and I try to beat them one, two, three. But if they take a cheap yeah. shot, you got to fight back and defend yourself, you know, like do unto yeah. others before they do unto you if you have to. But you could be a champion, too. Yeah. Look at her body, man. I mean, you people haven't seen this body yet? Joan, please, no come way. here. Please, yeah. please, yeah. please, please. Huh? You know, like I told you before, the lady I'm is beautiful in every old. way. Oh. I'm brittle. I you know, the first you. time, the first time this lady and myself lock up, if we ever do, it's going to be love at first bite. You know? But what I want to tell you right now... What I want to tell you right now is, you know... The first thing I would do is I'd have to train her to be a champion because that's exactly what she is. I don't think I can stand this much longer, you know. <laughs> 
ready. Turn the fans on, man. Fear the spread. Turn the fans on. It's getting hot in the kitchen. But the thing is, there's something called... There's something called a Clark Gable exercise, you know? All right. And the first thing you gotta do when you're a professional wrestler, if you wanna be a champion like I can make this lady, is you gotta be real flexible, you know? You gotta be real flexible. And what you do is you kinda, kinda, kinda stride one foot in front of the other, you know, put that one out there, and then you hang on to the Hulkster's big 24-inch pythons and wrap your arms around my neck like this, and then the first exercise we do <laughs> is we lean, lean, lean way back like this, and then I would say, say to Joan Rivers and everybody else out there, but she's my main squeeze, you know, <laughs> kiss me, you fool! <laughs> You turned the Hulk on. I, I bet like Fay Ray and King Kong, I'll tell you. <laughs> My next guest is also quite a Hulk. Quite a Hulk in his own way. He's a... <laughs> equally as excited. Equally as excited, equally as strong, equally as virile. He is a dear friend of mine. He was here in June, and right after he was on the show with me in June, he had a slight accident. He now is coming on with... <laughs> A broken nose. <laughs> a broken nose, a broken arm, and a broken hip. It's just terrible, but it is funny. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> Did that pansy... <laughs> did that pansy go? <laughs> Every other word was broken, busted bones, and Jackie, yeah, I got so nervous. <laughs> I almost passed him in the hall. <laughs> oh, he's a good friend of mine. He's lovely. And so he... <laughs> Has he left the building? Can you give me any help? Maybe. How are you? Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Are you, oh, you poor thing. Thank you. Call me every day, and you call me when I was home, and, and it was very moving because all my friends were wonderful, and it, it's very wonderful to get injured severely. Now this is what, <laughs> because all your friends, it's very touching. This is what all. If you ever go any place and you see this, you know that there's a history of a hip situation. <laughs> I got two partners, Tim and Ronnie. And between the three of us, we have three hip operations, two plates and two pins, and we got one good leg. And we had these meetings the last three weeks about a new project. There are three guys, one leg. You know what I mean? Lunch is an hour and a half coming from the kitchen, which is over there. But when we have a meeting, we say things like, I think the second scene, if we go out outdoors, <laughs> then the other two says, I think it's better indoors. And then you got three guys doing this for two hours. And now, then you realize it's hip city. Tell us exactly tell us what In my happened. own words, I was in this little harmless pony act with Phyllis Diller. It was very sweet. For a television special. For a special television. Uh, it was, uh, let us say that the pony was very tiny and very sweet and lovely. You were working with animals. Well, an animal, one pony, tiny, small, like a dog. Right. You know what I'm saying? But in, the, in what happened was in the actual performance, something was different than it was before, and I couldn't dismount. Now, it's only, only I could dismount from a pony that I'm, that I'm taller than, because <laughs> you just don't even dismount, but I couldn't step off right in, so I injured myself. How? I don't know. I have to look at the tape. You know what I mean? I don't know how or when I injured myself. Someone told exactly. me exactly. That you... Really, I don't. Right. And it's very interesting because the doctor said usually you get a broken hip in the air. In the air? <laughs> no, but it's true. In the air, you, you never. Not 
on the air, in the air. But in the air, when you fall, it's never when you have a, 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 a fall on the floor. It's when you, you were in the air, it, it, it separates. That's when it breaks. Have you heard that before? Once. Okay. But you never... So, so it happened that way. No. I think. You said. But you also... Then broke... I broke my nose in the morning part of the rehearsal. <laughs> but that was my fault because I was overacting. Okay? <laughs> and, and I broke the nose and it was my fault that I broke the nose. Your nose looks great, by the way. It goes this way now. See, the eye goes, the nose goes this way. And the doctor said, I'll fix your nose. I said, why bother? Do you know what I mean? Then I, I love my doctor that fixed my hip. I have this big scar. But the scar is you can't see it because he sewed it from inside, and he keeps looking at it like my beautiful scar. He said, Doctor, I am not a bikini model. It doesn't matter. A scar would be nice. It you know make what you I'm saying? rugged. Well, it would, I would be more hulkish, hulkifying. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I'm not a bikini model. I'm not gonna, you know. Now, did you know no, right I, away? No, you don't know anything. So what happened was I broke the nose, and I'm laying on the, in, the emergency, uh, in the emergency ward. You're coughing during my interview? <laughs> The end of a star. No, so anyway, no, that's when they start reading on the side. No. My flowers I never got from this company. I don't want to bring that up now. But anyway, not even a bottle. Nothing came. Nothing, Nothing came. NBC. 22 years I walked, may I say, walked on here. I couldn't walk on tonight. But anyway, so I'm just kidding. So, where was I? That they didn't send you flowers. No, that's okay. So you, you broke your nose in the morning. I broke good. I broke the nose in the, mor in the morning part of rehearsal, and I'm laying in Las Vegas in the emergency ward, and this very nice Dr. Taylor, I think that was his name, is sewing up my nose. Because I had to have, because I'm on the screen, and it, I shouldn't have, you know, it should be sewed so there wouldn't be a scar. Don't be worried. Uh, so anyway, I can't do the things to you that Hulk can do for you. You know what I'm saying? I know that, but I could read to you. But anyway... <laughs> but anyway... But anyway, the doctor's sewing up the nose, and I'm going, what's happening? You know what I mean? I should have said, my mother would say, you should have stayed home where you belong. So then they're calling from the, from the, from the place where the show is, can you come at, by 3 o'clock? And I'm going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, tell him when it stops bleeding, because I had a purple costume. I didn't want it to bleed all over the costume, because that could kill an act, even this one. <laughs> so what happened, what happened was I finally got, I finally got the nose fixed and stopped and stuffed. The, the doctors said, don't breathe in or out, because everything could go, <laughs> So I go back <laughs> to the arena, where I should never have gotten near, because at 54, you don't go into an arena and start to be like a Hulk. Hogan. You know what I'm saying? Tell me. <laughs> so what happened was I, 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 I get into this act and then suddenly I'm on the pony and the next minute I'm off the pony. you got to keep in mind that the get pony, it's okay if I put the weight on this side. The pony is like a dog. So all I do, I was off anyway and I managed to break my arm and my hip by falling at least three to four inches. <laughs> you know what I mean? From the top of the big top. No, but it's true. And then I thought, do I have a second? Because sure, I gotta tie sure. it up. I'll tie it up. I'm well enough to tie it up. <laughs> so what happened was I'm on a chair and I and you I, I didn't know I broke my hip, but when you broke your hip, God, I hope nobody ever uh, we all have to have into uh, your life a little pain came a little uh, less than a year ago. I don't want to get too emotional. <laughs> Flowers will be there in the morning. <laughs> but whatever happened. Whatever happens, be careful, because it's dangerous. You don't know when. So anyway, where was I? You were, you were lying there with... Good. So I was... <laughs> oh, so they got me up, and I was in agony, and I finished the act anyway. By, I had that? to Because I had to get the act in the can, as we say in showbiz, because uh, Phyllis had to get... We had to get it. So it's in the can. You know what I mean? So anyway, I go in, and I had to get back to L.A. I didn't want to go in Las Vegas in a hospital, and I thought I had pinched my nerve, severed a ligament or muscle. Those all sounded good, right? So what did I do? I didn't know. So the next morning, I call an ambulance because I really could not move. So I call the ambulance. I think it's a pinched nerve. It's a thing. It's a that. It's a minor thing, a ligament. So the ambulance comes. Now, I live in Beverly Hills. I live in such a small house. This is my bedroom, okay? There's a floor plan for the bedroom. What's important was they had the gurney, you know, you see on the eyewitness news. 
I finally got ent on entertainment tonight. <laughs> Injured, hurt, Milton Berle in the hospital, Lucille Ball in the hospital. Charles Nelson Riley also injured. <laughs> so what, what happened was, what happened was, where was I? You were, they were taking you out of your house, and they oh, brought the gurney so in. So the gurney comes in. Now, I have such a small house, this is the truth, the gurney could not get down the hall and around the corner to the bedroom. Now, that's true. He says, we can't get it down the hall, and I'm laying on the bed in agony. I said, well, wait a minute, take the dining room chair. I'll go out in the chair. But the point is, these, they make these gurneys to go under turned over trucks to take people out to go into the mines in a shaft. That's how big my bedroom is. The guy couldn't turn it around. <laughs> so I come to the door. It's a nice house. I'm happy. Like I once had it decorated. I had it decorated a year ago. You know, and so the guy stands in this bedroom that's this size and he says, Is this the master suite? <laughs> This sweet, this is a small, crummy back bedroom. You know, there's someone else's house. So anyway, I'm yes. fine. They're going to do what? We're going to do a commercial. Okay, I'll be still here. You... It takes me an hour and a half to get to the car. And about the dressing room, that's two miles down the hall, I want to speak to you about. You want to do the commercial? Oh, we'll... sure. At War of the Show, we pause for this commercial, a commercial interview. <laughs> beautiful and very talented young actress that we see every Wednesday night in Dynasty. Will you please help me welcome Miss Catherine Oxenberg. <laughs> I'm nice to finally meet you. Well, thank you. And are you alive or dead? This uh, I just hope that uh, the terrorists had very bad aim. Now I'm alive. Oh, good, good. And uh, does everyone know who is alive? I won't ask you because that, that would blow the show. But does everyone know already who's, who's dead and who's alive? Um, almost. <laughs> Give us... What about A few you? people haven't turned off on set yet, so we're not quite sure. The negotiations are hot. <laughs> yes, yes. Joan Collins, I said, has not turned up on the set yet. Well, well I haven't seen her yet. T just say once. I love it when you say it on the air. Yes, mummy. Yes, mummy. <laughs> <laughs> do you say that to you? Anything I, else? <laughs> do you, no, no, no. Do you say that to your own? Are you a princess? Because they say you're a real princess. Well, tell me, does Oxenberg sound very regal to you? No, but no, it's <laughs> Holstein. You know what I'm saying. It's, it's, are you? I'm uh, the closest I get is probably as close as you do. I'm, I'm as close as a, a Jap is as close as I get to being a princess. But your mother is a princess. My mother is a princess. Now, what happened? How did your mother get to be a princess, and you're not like a princess et? <laughs> I'd like to be a princess et as much as a starlet, thank you very much. Uh, because uh, she married my father, and I take my father's name, and he was a, a Brooklyn boy. Your mother, ma a princess, married a Brooklyn boy? Why, absolutely. How did they meet? In St. Anton, skiing. And my father was a self-made man who grew up in Brooklyn. Um, he used to sell newspapers <coughs> for a nickel on the side of the street or whatever. And my mother was born in a palace in, in Belgrade, in like the equivalent of Buckingham Palace. So it really is. He's sort of the prototype of the American success story dream, and she's sort of another strange fairy tale dream. So it's a funny combination. There were, there were big bucks there when your mother met your father. It wasn't like she stopped the limo and jumped out and said, Paper boy! Oh, hello! <laughs> And did the, the, the fairy tale romance last? Uh, not, not very long. <laughs> oh. Would you marry, would you marry royalty? Because you've seen both sides of the coin. No. Prince Andrew? No. What's his one from Monaco? Oh, Albert. Al cute, baldy, but cute. <laughs> yeah. Do they consider them real royalty or are they kind of snicker? Uh, well, I think they're, they're not HRHs. They're yeah. just serene highnesses. As that's kind of. <laughs> what's the queen really what a like? Snob. No. But, look, I've read all the books. We can talk. I, I, I feel very close to you. What's the queen really like? Have you ever I met her? I am terrified by her. Why? Because she's. I don't know. She's sort of awe-inspiring. I mean, there's the queen. I mean, wouldn't you? Be, you've met her. How did you feel? Yeah, but I. I. She heckled me. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I've only seen her on a stamp. I went over, I licked the back of her head. Everything I did was... <laughs> I'm not surprised she heckled. 
<laughs> what about the rest of the royal family? Do, are you friendly with any of them? Um, I don't actually have that much contact anymore since I've started to work. <laughs> are, they, are they amused or upset by you becoming a commoner? <laughs> I mean, I don't well, think they care. <laughs> you know. Um, I don't think either way. I think that... He They're was probably a... amused. I know that the, most of them love Dynasty. Do they watch it? Yeah. Isn't that wild? Do you ever turn to the camera and go... <laughs> <laughs> what is it like to grow up in a palace? What did your mother... Did your mother tell you stories that you just go, I can't believe it? Well, she left when she was four years old. So she just has very infantile memories. And uh, they were given four hours to leave. Why? Uh, because of the communist... Because it was World War II and there was an invasion and the Nazis came in and they were given four hours to leave the country. What did they take? Uh, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> did they grab... Like, <laughs> I wish! <laughs> I mean, were they smart enough to run for the jewelry? I mean, you know, you got four hours. Quick, grab the crown. Okay. <laughs> I'm having to make up for it on salary. Hopefully I'll buy back something. Isn't that awful? <laughs> it is a terrible... I dream of the wonderful things that... Might have been in mine. I know. <laughs> now, you're single now. So who do you date? Do, are people awed by the whole background and, and all the knowledge and the, the events that you've been through? I mean, it must be very hard for a boy to say, hey, let's go have pizza. And you go, love to. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're more in, uh, in awe of my terrible sense of humor. You've had a very good sense. You're very charming. What a delight to talk with you. That's, we'll be right back after this commercial message. So please stay tuned. It's dynasty in England, right? Not dynasty. What are they called? Dysentery? <laughs> what a lovely show. What, will you come back and spend a little more time? Because it's been so quickly. I It'd know. It'd be nice to talk to you a little bit more if we could. Today, I want to thank the weather girls who have left to go off and do their work. I would like to thank Hulk Hogan, who, whew, I'm glad he left. Charming, but gets me very nervous. Okay. <laughs> I want to thank Charles Nelson Riley, who thank can't you. leave. But he's I just can't sit go there. anyway. I got two hours to get my stuff and out of the palace. Kevin Oxenberg from Dynasty. Tomorrow night, my guests will be Roger Miller, Steve Gutenberg, John Biner, and King of Funk, Rick James. So please, come back and watch it again tomorrow night. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. Joan Rivers' wardrobe, furnished by Oscar De La Renta. Coming up next, it's a nightcap of laughter on Late Night with David Letterman as David talks style with the inimitable Grace Jones. Then start your day with NBC News at sunrise.